Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister with a crystal clear brief to bring down the curtain on Britain's political circus. Boris Johnson had brought disorder and deceit to, to, to Downing Street. Liz Truss brought ridicule and ruin to the whole country. And all the while, the Conservative Party had indulged itself in an orgy of mudslinging, a relentless shambolic slugfest between the hardliners, the Remainers, the Reformers, the Blue Wall, the European Research Group, the Net Zero Group, the Common Sense Group, the Boris Backers, the Trussonomics Tossers, that they all forgot something fundamental. Nobody cares. Rishi Sunak seemed to get that. He was the grown-up back in charge for most of the first year of his tenure in number 10. Whether you think he's doing a good job or not, or like him or not, at least it was a truce in the Tory civil war, and he brought a bracing competence and civility to the office. Well, that truce is well and truly over. Last night, his immigration minister, Robert Jenrick, dramatically quit, claiming version 8.0 of the useless Rwanda policy is doomed to fail, which I've said it would be from day one. Today, the PM found himself giving an emergency press conference to defend that useless policy and his future. I will not allow a foreign court to block these flights. If the Strasbourg court chooses to intervene against the express wishes of our sovereign parliament, I will do what is necessary to get flights off. And today's new laws already make clear that the decision on whether to comply with interim measures issued by the European Court is a decision for British government ministers and British government ministers alone. Because it is your government, not criminal gangs or indeed foreign courts, who decides who comes here and who stays in our country. Now, of course, our Rwanda policy is just one part of our wider strategy to stop the boats. And that strategy is working. Well, suddenly this has become a very serious problem for Mr Sunak. If it doesn't work, his job may be on the line. Rumours are already swirling about a wave of resignations and a possible no-confidence vote next week. And the movement against him is clearly being led by Suella Braverman, who he fired as Home Secretary for undermining him. She was out early this morning to do what she does best, pour some poison and fuel onto the flames. You've condemned the leader of your party's uncertain, weak and lacking in leadership. You've said he never had any intention of keeping his promises. You've accused him of betrayal and wishful thinking. Isn't the truth you're a headline grabber who does it by spreading poison even within your own party? And sometimes honesty is uncomfortable. And if that upsets polite society, then I'm sorry about that. But the point is that we need to be honest. We need to be clear-eyed about the situation right now. We can't keep failing the British people. We have made promise after promise. We have put forward plan after plan. They have all failed. Well, she might be right about this plan not working. I never thought it would work. Where she's wrong is thinking she has a cat in hell's chance of being a suitable replacement as Prime Minister. And for the Tories to be speculating about knifing Sunak and installing their fourth leader in 18 months is complete insanity. This country faces severe challenges an ongoing cost of living crisis, a housing crisis, an immigration crisis, an NHS crisis, a public transport crisis. The list is endless. People need their leaders to get on with fixing the country, not bickering over which faction of the Conservative Party they're in. If they can't do that, then frankly, they deserve the oblivion currently awaiting them at the next election. Well, joining me now to talk about this is Talk TV's international editor, Isabel Oakshot, the Talk TV contributor, Paul Arone Adrian, plus writer and commentator, Anaya Falarin. Well, welcome to all of you. All right, Isabel, let's get into this uh, off the top. Rishi Sunak is facing, as were his three predecessors, potential death at the hands of probably the most disloyal bunch of ratbags I've ever seen in political history. Discuss. Well, Piers, I'm happy to say that tonight I actually agree with almost everything you said there. Rishi Sunak's government is teetering on the brink here. Uh, this is a genuine crisis for the Prime Minister. It's not that Robert Jenrick is a particularly important or pivotal or high-profile figure. The man who resigned uh, last night is hardly a household name. It is the fact that there's been a complete breakdown already of discipline within his administration. And in theory, we could have a whole other year of this utter charade of Rishi Sunak popping up to deliver emergency legislation and emergency press conferences to try to regain the initiative. And I just don't see how we can stagger on. How can the country 
be expected to, to stagger on with this farce for another 12 months. I just don't think it's sustainable. Paula, I mean, it, what concerns me about this is there are far more important things for these people to be doing than bickering and squabbling amongst themselves, but it seems like they've got an addiction to this. Uh, completely. And herein lies Rishi's problem. I also agree with pretty much everything that you've just said in your monologue, and that's his problem, that across the board, from left to right, there is an agreement that, that Rishi Sunak is letting this country down, that he's watching this country crumble and doing nothing about it other than providing a, a facade. We're not interested in the European Convention on Human Rights. We're not interested in, 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 in the boats and, and, and people seeking asylum. What we're interested in is the fact that this country is failing and it's failing at every single level, Piers. I mean, Anaya, it's interesting, isn't it, what Paula said there, because if you actually judge him fairly, Rishi Sunak, he's got the illegal numbers on boats down by, I think, 30%, which is not a bad thing to have achieved this year. His inflation is pretty much where he hoped it would be when I sat down with him at the start of the year. So on some of his metrics... He's ticking a few boxes here, but getting no credit because his party is so split now that it, no one's really focusing on any wins. All they want is to tear each other apart. We have to remember, Piers, that I think in many ways Rishi Sunak set himself up for this. One of his main pledges was stopping the boats, not just getting it down by some percentage points, but stopping it. And therefore, people are holding him to that metric, which on that metric he has failed. And if we go back, actually, he didn't have the majority vote of the Conservative Party or its members. He wasn't elected in a stonking majority like what happened with Boris Johnson um, in 2019, even though I have very strong disagreements with Boris in, in some areas. So Rishi Sunak was already on uh, quite difficult ground and he had to really prove to people that he could uh, commit and deliver the things that he promised and also unite the party. And he hasn't been able to do that. And therefore, the swords are coming out. And therefore, I think that actually, in many ways, um, he should have expected this when he couldn't fulfil the very thing that he said he would do. I mean, I think, uh, Isabel, actually, one of his big problems was making Swella Braverman Home Secretary again in the first place. She'd already been fired from that job once. And I said at the time on this show, this is complete madness to bring her straight back. She's obviously damaged goods. And I thought then not trustworthy, given the way she had lied before. Uh, but look, you make your bed and you have to lie on it. And he's now in big trouble, no question.